Hey everybody, this is Joe Robinson, and in this video I'm going to show you how to play the Santana classic Flor de Luna, Moonflower. This is a great song to learn. This is going to be an intermediate level guitar lesson. I have a free backing track for you to download, so just click the link below and you can download the backing track. You'll also get access to all my other backing tracks, all my free tab, and I'm constantly updating that link with other free content. So if you'd like to have access to that, just click the link below and download the free backing track. I do have tab and notation available for this song also. That's available through Music Notes. And I cannot distribute this for free because it's copyrighted material, but through Music Notes, you can purchase the transcription if you're interested. But I'm going to show it to you in explicit detail. We're going to go through the chords to begin with, and then we'll learn the melodies. I'm going to be teaching this song to you on an acoustic guitar. You can, of course, play an electric guitar. Santana plays an electric guitar. I like playing it on an acoustic because there's nothing to hide behind with an acoustic guitar. You'll hear all the nuances of what I'm doing, all the vibrato, the dynamics. I'm just playing my acoustic guitar through a microphone here, so there's no pedals or amps to get in our way. With all that being said, let's jump into it. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you're new here. I hope you enjoy the lesson. The chords to Florida Luna sound like this. One, two, three, four. Then the B section goes like this. repeats. This song is very repetitive, it's very catchy, so it's one of those tunes that I think you may find it easier to learn than you might have thought it would. It was from listening to it. I love songs like that. So we go from D minor to an A7 suspended fourth chord here. It's important to learn the chords I think before we learn the melodies because it kind of gives us context for what the melodies are playing and the scales used and that kind of thing. So we have D minor to A7 suspended fourth. So the A7 seven suspended fourth, it's a mouthful, is five, seven, five, seven, five, five. And the D minor chord, of course, is five, seven, seven, six, five, with the low E string not being played. Then we go to a regular A7 chord after that A7 suspended fourth back to a D minor, then to a G minor, and then we go to a G minor sixth. This is a great chord, so it's third fret, you don't play the fifth string, and then you play two, three, 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 G minor sixth. Then we play D minor, A7, and D minor. So at tempo, three, four. right hand, I'm just playing a little finger picking pattern, kind of get, getting the bass going. That's my goal is to reinforce that groove. I think that you'll find that the real legitimate Latin American players will probably feel this a little bit differently and play different patterns. I'm just playing it the way I feel it and the way I like it and I'd encourage you to find your own way of playing this groove. But those are the chords for the A section at least. The B section goes from G minor to a C9. That C9 is very similar to the G6 chord, G minor 6 I should say. The C9 has frets, you don't play the low E, and then you play 3rd fret, 2nd fret, 3-3-3. Three, three, three. Then we play an F major 7, and of course you can play any inversion of that. I like this inversion personally. So it's F, 1st well, fret. 3rd fret, 3rd fret, 2nd fret, 1st fret, and then open E. Then we play an E minor 7 flat 5, or an E half diminished, which is another way of describing that chord. 
So that is, you don't play the low E, you play the 7th fret, the 8th fret, the 7th fret, and the 8th fret. It's just a 4 note voicing of that chord. And we go to A7, back to D minor. So the B section of tempo chords sound like this. One, two, three, four. Now you know the chords to Florida to Luna. Let's learn the melodies now. The A section melody sounds like this. Isn't it great? I love that song. And then we just repeat that. So we're playing 7th fret on the 3rd string here. And then we play 10th fret and 10th fret on the 2nd and 1st strings. And I like to play those notes kind of short and detached. And with a little vibrato there, if you choose. I do a pull off from that 10th fret to the 8th fret. And then we play the 11th fret on the 2nd string to the 10th fret on the 2nd string. And to tell you the truth, if it takes you 10 minutes of just playing that first phrase, that's time well spent because it'll get locked into your muscle memory. over and over again like that. Repetitive practice is what's going to allow us to build that, that muscle memory. Then we go okay so it's 10th fret in the high E, 8th fret, 11th fret and then a little hammer on. I think I do it with that fingering. Sometimes I'll play this song in different positions on the neck. So if you watch my performance video, on one time I go, and the other time I go. I'm just used to playing these melodies that I can play them in different places on the neck. And that's what happens when you get comfortable playing like the D harmonic minor scale. just learn that scale all over the neck and it allows you to play melodies like this with a little more ease because these melodies are all within that harmonic minor scale even though that particular note is the natural minor scale anyway I won't I won't get down a rabbit hole of scales but that second phrase 10 8 11 10 hammer on pull off to the 8 with a bit of vibrato going there. And with vibrato, you want the finger to kind of come sideways like this. To get that blues vibrato. Classical players will try to play with their finger straight like this, but you can't do blues vibrato like that. You need to have it on the side. So far we have... Okay, once more. Three, four. Then we go. Okay, so we have ninth fret, tenth fret on the third string, and then eighth fret on the second string, and then back down, tenth fret, ninth fret on the third string, and then back up, tenth fret on the second string. 
a little bit brighter there. So far we have three, four. Then we go. Okay, 10th fret, 11th fret, 8th fret, back down, 11th fret, 10th fret, 10th fret with a bit of vibrato. And you'll see when I do that vibrato with the ring finger on the 10th fret of the high E string, I'll kind of pull that other finger behind it, other two fingers behind it actually, and I'll use that first finger to mute the other notes so they don't ring out, otherwise it's and you might hear them ringing out, which we don't want. And I'll reinforce the note with the second finger behind that ring finger. The middle finger, that is. To get the nice vibrato. Okay, we're almost finished this A section, really. So far we have... Then we go That's the harmonic minor vibe going through there So we have 12th fret 14th fret 15th fret and if you don't want to play this in that position like you don't have a cutaway on your acoustic guitar for example you can play it here Just change the place the notes are played, but I'll keep to the, the tab the way the tab is written here, which is I believe the way I play it in my performance video for this lesson. So 12, 14, 15, 14, 12th, all in the third string, and then we go hammer on from the 12th to the 14th fret, and then with the ring finger we play that 15th fret on the 4th string. And then hammer on in the 12th fret, the 14th fret, pull off, and then 15th fret on the 4th string, 12th fret on the 3rd string, 14th fret on the 4th string, 15th, 12th, 11, 12th. So it's Beautiful phrase. Once more. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And the whole A section. Three, four. Then we just repeat that section. The B section sounds like this. One, two, And that, that's it, that's the B section. There's not that much to it and it's quite repetitive. So we start 14th fret of the third string, then 15th fret, 13th fret of the second string, and then 15th fret 
the second string. So it's 14, 15, 13, 15 with a little vibrato. Then we do this this bend here. So we go 13th fret of the first string, 12th fret, 15th fret of the second string, and we bend a whole step. And it's a bit difficult to do that on an acoustic guitar, especially to get the sustain, but we do our best. <laughs> then we go 14th fret of the third string, 13th fret, 14th fret, hammer on from the 13th fret to the 15th fret, back to the 13th fret of the second string, and then we do a like a bend, half step bend that is, from that 10th fret down to the 8th fret, the low E string. Play that phrase, 9th fret of the 3rd string, 10th fret, 8th fret, 10th fret. We do a little bit of a bend and then we hammer on from the 8th fret to the 10th fret. So, so far we have... And the good news is that just repeats with a slight variation. So we go 14th fret, 15th fret, 13th fret, 15th, again. And then we go. So it's this nice little melody. All it is is 15th fret, 13th fret, 12, 13, 15. And then kind of like a double bend. And then we go 13th fret, 14th fret, from the 2nd string to the 3rd string. We hammer on to the 15th fret, and then back to the 13th fret. And then we do a little bend and release. 10th fret, bending down to the 8th fret. And then we have this little resolving lick. With the harmonic minor, natural 7th going on there. So we go 9, 10, 8, 10th, sliding down to the 6th fret on the 3rd string, 7. So that entire B section sounds like this, 3, 4, 2, 3. Like I said, if you take 10 minutes to get each one of those phrases and you practice for 20 minutes a day, you'll get it in a couple of weeks. And that's a normal way to learn a song like this. The good news is the next song you learn with it will be that much easier. The next song you learn will be that much easier. That's what guitar playing takes. To train our hands to do these really intricate coordinations takes some perseverance and a lot of repetition. So we've learned the A section and we've learned the B section. The form of this song goes A, A, B, A, which is a classic song form. And then we have this interlude. And I'm going to show you the interlude and then talk about how to solo over this song. So the interlude is very short. It goes like this. Just that one little riff that repeats twice. So it's just a D minor arpeggio to begin with, 12th fret of the 4th string, 10th fret of the 3rd string, 10th fret of the 2nd string, and then 12th fret of the 3rd string, 9th fret, 12th fret again, and then 11th fret of the 2nd string. And then we do this chromatic walk up, 8, 9, 10, sounds like this. Repeat that. 
and that's the interlude. So the solo section to Florida Luna contains this little turnaround. And that's always soloing over. It just goes D minor to E minor 7 flat 5 to A7 to a D minor. Chords we already learned earlier on. And the melody sounds like this. The solo melody that is. And then we go into a bit of improvisation. So that solo melody is simply the 10th fret of the second string, 11th fret, 10th fret, 8th fret, so just those three notes. And then we go 9th fret of the second string, the E note, and then A, B flat, A, so 10, 11, 10 of the second string. Back down, 11, 10, 8, and we just repeat that. Play that high D note, 10th fret of the high E string, and then 11, 8, 11, 10, 8. <laughs> Something like that. It's just a small combination of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 notes. From there, we basically play some riffs over D minor 7, E minor 7 flat 5, and A7. And I'm basically improvising. I think I play some of Santana's riffs and kind of approximate them a little bit, but I'm not playing them note for note. So I'd encourage you to just play around with two scales here. I encourage you to play around with a natural minor scale. Download the backing track and play along with it with that natural minor scale and also play along with it with a harmonic minor scale. Because that has a really great sound, especially over that A7 chord. So what I'd probably do is play D natural minor. And then I'd go to that C sharp note, which makes it a harmonic minor when we play that A7 chord. So, I hope that made sense. D natural minor. You can add a little blues note in there if you want. And then when you go to the A7 chord, play the harmonic minor. harmonic minor in the key of D, that is. There we have it, and to exit the solo, we play this little riff. It's a really nice little So we have 7th fret of the 3rd string, and then all on the 2nd string, 6, 5, 8, 6, 10, 8, 11, 10, 15, 14, and then high E on the 12th fret of the high E string. And then we resolve on that 15th fret of the B string, the D note. From there we go back into the B section. Etc. And it just repeats from there. So that's all we have. Let's talk about the structure of this song a little bit. So we start off with the, the A section. And we play that section twice. Then we go to the B section. And that is quite repetitive and quite short, really. Then we go back to the A section. Then we go to this interlude riff. 
And then we go to the solo. And we improvise a little bit after that section. Then we go to this interlude. Back into the B section. And that's basically it. At the end, you can solo and improvise at your will. But the song is relatively simple, extremely beautiful, and a lot of fun to play, if you ask me. So I hope you found this lesson to be helpful. Don't forget to download the free backing track that's below. You'll also get access to all my other backing tracks and a bunch of free tab. It's really worth it. And check out the tab if you're interested in learning the note-for-note -note melodies of, of this song if you can't decipher them from me calling out the fret names. But like I said, I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments. If you did, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I wish you all the best. Thanks for watching. Take good care.